Some guys really like Batman, and they had an epiphany. So they all got to work on the next Batman movie. And now they are the heroes, and you get to follow along. They're bringing him to life every week after this song. Batman, Project Batman, Project Batman. Fuck yeah! Yes? <laughs> you, you see that's what a family guy where uh, Peter and Carter uh, beat at the at the rope store? No. It's funny. He's like testing on rogues right at the title. And um... Keep going. Um... <laughs> am I telling a joke yet? <laughs> that's like I should dance. <laughs> well... Carter comes out at least three times, and Peter's like, no. And then the third time he comes out, the robe's open, and his penis is dangling. And it's actually drawn and animated. And then Peter's just like, yep, the one with the penis. <laughs> no, not funny. You guys see <laughs> I got to see this. You, you know what I thought, it, you know what I found out the other day that I thought was absolutely hilarious? Neil Armstrong used to go around telling really unfunny jokes about the moon, and then following them up with, oh, I guess he had to be there. Oh, man. <laughs> That's great. That's hilarious. I like that. He's one of 12 people on Earth who can make that work. Oh, that really is amazing. Right? <laughs> Truly a legend. I think he should be more famous for that than for actually being on the moon. Mo- moon comedy. That's a, pre- <laughs> that's a pretty niche genre to master. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys. What's going on? How's it going? We're recording. Project Batman in the house or in the Batcave. Yeah, your penis check was on. Oh, okay. okay. Well, yeah, his thing is that generally he'll, uh, he'll start recording long before anybody's aware and so it just starts out naturally as a conversation and flows into the podcast. Makes sense, doesn't it? people in. Yeah, exactly. But every time you, you describe that, it ruins the flow of the conversation. Well, yeah, but you can <laughs> cut right, that cut, out. Cut, cut, reshoot it. I liked it, but uh, we're going to do it topless this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, Action. Someone's been, watching, someone's been watching Whose Line Does It Anyway. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Okay, <clears throat> so where are we this week, Ken? We're we're in your your apartment above your garage, as per usual. Okay. Hashtag I thought, house apartment. I thought <laughs> I thought you would have recognized it by now. Hashtag hashtags are stupid. <laughs> Only to people who don't live on Twitter, like myself. Hashtag having a life. <laughs> <laughs> you post a Facebook status update every day about what you do. It's I just don't, a longer not, tweet. I, that's, my, that's my first fucking Facebook status in like a week. Okay. What was your status? I, I was just describing how awesome my week was. And that other people didn't get to go to the Tilted Kilt and hit on a fucking waitress. The same waitress. Speaking of which... Uh, shout out to Samantha who is supposed to be listening to this podcast because she thought it was awesome. We were, we were in this restaurant in North Carolina for three fucking hours. Like the waitress was just talking about, it. I mean, she was talking about Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, and then and then the conversation shifted to Batman. She pulled out her like phone case with you know the Arkham City fucking Batman on it, and then and then the I told her about the podcast. She's like, wow, that's pretty fucking awesome. So. I linked her to it. So is she now known as the waitress? <laughs> <laughs> that thought has crossed my mind more than once. <laughs> Are you turning the situation? He's uh, actually Mantis Toboggan. Mantis Toboggan. Got a magnum dong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I dropped this huge condom for my magnum dong. <laughs> the waitress was... Oh. I saw her in something last night and I couldn't remember what it was, but it was the latest episode of Brooklyn Nine Nine. You guys watch it? I want to. I haven't seen it yet. It's pretty funny. Is it actually funny? Yeah. Didn't expect it to be. Yeah, that, that was my thought too. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have to speak up. No, right? Interaction. <laughs> Introduce yourself. This is. 
Ready for <laughs> Bobby. Bobby Craig. Yes. People got looking up now. Oh yeah. If you have a question, now Dan, they're just is he Bobby Craig? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm officially like affiliated for this with this night and this podcast. The, right the, the microphone is is almost a fifth person. Oh, uh, it's it's Sorry, almost it's, it's it's almost a character in in our uh, in our whole podcast thing. The canon of Project Batman. <laughs> <laughs> you just see like the microphone just lurking somewhere in the. Sh- oh man, we should totally do that in one shot. Just like you know how sometimes you got a really bad boom operator and he gets the microphone in the shot. <laughs> <laughs> that needs to happen in in our thing. Just like some somewhere. Yes. Or we just we've said this before. We do the just the whole blooper reel out there in the credits. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so if you do that, can you also have that whole like uh, Christian Bale yelling at the guy during Terminator Salvation? Just be the boom guy, <laughs> <laughs> and it's Batman, so it works. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, you just have Batman <laughs> do it, do it instead of Christian Bale. Just whoever's doing it, do it. It just climaxes with voice. him beating the shit out of the guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so, alright, I guess I should get this out of the way first. I have news, and... Is it the good kind of news? I don't know how it's gonna go over. Do they have a cream for it? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I said, do they have a cream for it? <laughs> <laughs> um, if they do, no. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I got nothing. I got no joke to follow it up with. Um, well, it's not bad news. It's not bad for me or this podcast or this project, necessarily. Then it's bad for us. It's no. Bad. You. What right. is the news? Okay. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking. Okay. <laughs> um, so, man, this is a lot of exp- exp- expo- or expose. Is that the right word? Mm, um, exposition. Yeah, this is a lot of exposition, but okay. Years ago, my grandfather died. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, When he died, he uh, had it in his will that each me and my cousins would get a certain amount of money, but um, we weren't going to get it just like right off the bat. The only um, clauses were um, we would get it if we went to a four-year college or when we turned 33. So my grandmother's taken control of all of that since then. Even though my grandfather, it was in his will, so I don't know how she has control of any of it, but that's what I've been told. Anyway, she's starting to go um, senile now, and my mother and aunt have taken control or or, or have have talked to her lawyer and uh, started to take uh, control of Power, all of, power of all, attorney? Yeah, all of her finances via power of attorney. Um, and they know that uh, I'm not going to go to a four-year school because I just... In this day and age, it's... Yeah, it's... It, unless, you, unless you have... Unless you are ready to go into a job for that field, yeah, it's... And you, it, can, you can be in debt afterwards, even if you have money going in. You could... I mean, the only real reason to go is for community and... Um, that's the only real reason I can see to go to school these days. Anything you want to learn, you can learn on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so I have uh, convinced them, not really convinced them, but through a certain, uh, they know comedy is something I'm interested in. Mm-hmm. Like I went down to Virginia Beach the other night and did uh, stand up and it was great. And I, it was the first time I did it in months and it just reinvigorated me in this whole like, that's this is exactly what, or not reinvigorated me, but just continued to make me feel like this is exactly what I want to do, or one of the things I want to try and pursue. Um, so um, they know there's no school for that. There's no way to do it other than fucking experience, like just getting up on stage. But like as I said the other night, I had to go to Virginia Beach for an open mic. That's three and a half hours of driving for four minutes of talking to strangers, hoping to make them laugh, just to work out a joke to maybe be better at next time. So, um, I have 
been granted through via uh, my grandmother signing off on it with my mom and aunt that I can be allotted a certain amount of money um, per certain amount of time. I'm not giving actual figures on mm-hmm. any of this, yeah. but um, basically, as long as I am pursuing exactly what I want and uh, putting all of my effort into it, I get to fund. I get funds for that for a few years. Um, I I. I've I also have gotten the okay from my wife for this, but there's a lot of comedy centric cities in the U.S. that I want to move to eventually, um, because I hate Virginia. I always have. Um, it's just especially Waynesboro and this area we're in, and I've been to Charlottesville, which is supposedly the place you want to move to if you move to Virginia, and like that's half an hour away from here, and I've been there plenty, and it's not a place where I want to be. So. Um, I am. I just got the okay for this money, and I put in notices at both of my jobs. The last day I'm working is uh, November third. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys know anyone who's listened to this podcast or any of my other podcasts, or as you guys know, um, my, one of my big idols is uh, Kevin Smith. Um, I had to put in a 30-day notice for, for the newspaper route. They don't allow two weeks. You have to do 30 days or else you're fined. And so I didn't know any of this when I put in my notice, but I found out my last day would be November 3rd. On November 4th, Kevin Smith starts shooting his next movie in North Carolina, which is pretty fucking close to here, mm-hmm. and uh, relatively uh, to where he could be shooting it. And uh, he, he is told me before in person and I don't expect him to remember it all remember it at all uh, because A, he talks to thousands of people every year all the time for a few minutes and Mm -hmm. whatever and B he's a huge stoner but (laughs) he's told me before that like like I asked him, I was like, "Hey, any way I could like intern on your movie or whatever?" And and he's like, he said to me, he was like, "Dude, if you're in a place to do it, um, I mean, you seem like an all right guy. Just remind me of this conversation, and uh, uh, we'll see what happens. Just hit me up on Twitter or whatever." And I've been hitting him up on Twitter for like the past few weeks, and he hasn't answered me. But I'm persistent, <laughs> and I'm the kind of person that refuses to take uh, uh, the fact that I'm. No, I get to no longer work on the third, and him starting to shoot on the fourth as a coincidence. That's not a coincidence to me. Uh, so I'm going to go to North Carolina for a few days and see if I can get in on that shit. Um, that's the most recent development of this plan. But before that, it was uh, I am leaving for a month or so um, on the fifteenth mm-hmm. to go um, travel around the country to the different comedy centric cities Mm -hmm. um to see where i eventually want to go i'll be back by christmas um when i come back at christmas i'm going to be here till february um not working and then in february hill uh gets three weeks paid vacation and then her and i are going to go uh visit the places i liked most out of those 10 cities together and see which one we as a couple like most so that's uh, my future for the next few months. Uh, in regard and how this comes into play with Project Batman is I felt extremely guilty for the past few months about the fact that like I've been promising things over and over and I haven't been able to obtain, or, or I haven't been able to do them because I simply haven't had time. I've been working seventy hours a week pretty much like nonstop, and it uh, it I mean. A lot of things have suffered because of it. My relationship at a certain point, my health. I used to be a really healthy person. Um, I used to be really creative. I, I made a lot of music in 2012, and I haven't made any in 2013. Like I, I just, I didn't even realize like how much work had like taken a toll on like my stress in my life. But now all of a sudden, I'm going to have endless free time to be creative and pursue what I want. Um, I'm saying me being alone in hotel rooms for a month or so is going to give me a lot of time to focus on fucking writing. Yeah. And uh, 
I do not want in any way for the podcast to stop at that point. If anything, I would love to do it twice a week because, like I said, I'll be alone. I won't be surrounded by anyone I know ever. So if you guys could, if someone could download Skype. And we, I've, I've already got it. I've got it. Okay. And then we could just do it that way for a month or so. Mm-hmm. And then, like I said, I'll be back by Christmas and I should have um, first draft done by then as originally planned. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was going to try to save all that for the end of the podcast because it was such a huge shift in like the plans or whatever, but uh, there that is. Damn. That's brilliant. I appreciate your support. Uh, so, all that is to say, I haven't fucking done anything since we last recorded. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. I'll just pick up where we left off. All right, that sounds good. In other news, did you know that uh, if something says that it has... Uh, natural uh, uh, flavoring and it's vanilla or raspberry flavored. It comes out of a beaver's ass. A beaver's taint, yeah. Good lord, I didn't know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it doesn't mean that it's with <laughs> vanilla or raspberry. So it's tainted. <laughs> Alright, so we were working on the scene where he's talking about uh, the bat suit and all the neat stuff it can do, right? Yeah, uh, and they, they had just like Alfred. Alfred's just like woken up. He prepared breakfast for Bruce, who's in the bat cave and hasn't really slept. And uh, Bruce is looking at the bad guys, thinking of who it would be, but he doesn't like know anything. And so um, Alfred has just asked about uh, the bat suit. Mm-hmm. Um, Bruce says. Because he's making an, a new suit in this movie. Bruce says, uh, that's where I started. I was hoping you could help with some of the more specific features. But I think I figured out a basic design. Something like this. Then uh, Bruce brings up a blueprint of the Batman Beyond Bat suit. And uh, Alfred says, oh my, what have you so far? Mm-hmm. And then we get to write. Right. What I found, though, is that it's difficult to actually write the the actual script yeah. just out loud, going back and right. forth. So I think it's easier to come up with ideas and then write it based on the ideas. Yeah, well, that's but, that's why I felt bad about not having not done <laughs> that was, since last that, week. Yeah, that was what we did last week, wasn't yeah. it? Well, actually, um, I I forgot till just the second that I had another idea on the way over here, and uh, I need to pull this up in order to do. Do you have a question? <laughs> I'm gonna raise my hand. Uh, so, Bob, are you helping on this project? I am not. I'm currently working on other projects. Okay. But I would like to know I'm how like where y'all at in, in production wise, like standpoint. Uh, production wise, we are most of the way through storyboarding the trailer. We have uh, one animatic completed for a uh, concept scene. Um, pr- uh, we've got a a bit of the music done. Uh, otherwise, everything else is just waiting on the script. And then when the script gets done, we're going to go into uh, two separate modes. We're going to do the storyboarding and we're going to do the voice acting. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's have we that's, heard from Pekins? Huh? Have we heard from Pekins? Uh I will have to remember to actually talk to him first. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll message him right after we're done with this. No, Pekins is. Uh... He is the uh, voice of uh, yeah. He's the, he's our Joker voice okay, for for that. yeah for for our project. Sean he, was telling me something about that a few weeks ago or about a month. Ago. Are you fixing the Batman mask? Huh? Yeah, it's uh, just fixing it up with like I think it's like wood putty. It was white, and I was like, oh, I remember that being black. <laughs> Snow Batman. <laughs> Batman and Robin. <laughs> oh, um, another thing I wanted to say is um. First of all, I uh, one one of my jobs, my last day is Thursday, so I only have four more days there, and then I'll have free time during the day to be able to do this by the time we record another one of these. Um, so I'll definitely have written something by then. But um, 
more importantly, in that uh, week and a half before I leave, what I'm going to do is order um, business cards because, uh, uh, and I'd like you guys as like input on like what to put on them and how to design them or whatever. But um, because if I'm driving around the country and I run into people who would be interested in this at all, oh yeah, be it to just listen as fans of Batman or writing or people who could legitimately help us with it. Uh, I think that would be a good thing to have. I made a business cards a while back. I'm sorry, I definitely have experience like making designs and graphics for them. If you ever need that, right on. I mean, okay, I'll, we'll tell you what we need on it if you <laughs> if you want to help us with that. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. I've got a pretty good idea for how we could do it. So cool. You guys design the business cards then, <laughs> and I will I will take them and hand them out, and then we can all have some. Yeah, and then he pulls out a business card. I do get a business card. I got a couple of them, but they're all bent because they're my wallet. <laughs> there you go. Oh. You can have that. Oh, it's upside down. Yeah, see, that's pretty neat. Well, yeah. I told him to go black on black. He wouldn't do it. Yeah, I could have black on black. <laughs> There's a website where you can see that. Really? Oh, yeah, black on black. Wait, no, we're thinking of oh, a different God. thing. Oh, <laughs> God. Are we thinking of a different... Yeah, I think we're thinking of a different thing. So <laughs> slightly different. Um, but... Okay. So what we could do is just go through these scenes and just each uh, say things we want to see. Maybe maybe details we haven't uh, uh, said before or... And obviously we won't get through the whole thing or whatever. But just, you know, talk about each scene. And, like, that could be things that, like... I compile from what we said about what happened in this Batcave scene in the last episode. From here on, I could compile like these uh, little things we want to see when I'm actually going into the writing process. Mm-hmm. If you want to do that, okay. I I, I always feel like uh, I always come in at the beginning of these shows and I'm just like, hey, here's something we could do. I don't know if that'll work, and then we end up doing <laughs> them. And I, I don't know if that's what you guys want to do. So if you got, I, or just, I mean, whatever you guys want to do. Just let me know. Um, the next scene would be um, uh, after Batman fi- sees uh, more attacks on the news, he makes a quick decision to go see if uh, anyone else in the world has any information. So that would be the uh, mountain meeting that he's on his way to. Mm-hmm. And we had had issue before because here in the scene layout, uh, I had uh, just a scene of him just like entering the mountain. Just like I, I, I had no idea what to put, so I said Bruce activates some secret thing to open a passageway, and the button would be, uh, we'd reveal his entry into the top secret meeting place for the United Nations. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, uh, what are the details for that? Well, what it, what okay. I thought we had talked about was that basically Bruce Wayne shows up there at the. Hold on, I'm actually going to look this up and get the name of this place, so we're. Because I looked it up and here, I forgot. Here, here, here. Oh, oh wait, wait I, I don't. I don't have your internet password. Yeah. Oh, that'll be easy to remember. What? Um, it's the Cheyenne Mountain Nuclear Bunker. Cheyenne. Yeah, well, that is easy to remember. So I don't think we'll forget that again. Mm-mm. Wait, why is that easy? Uh, it's because it's Franklin's girlfriend, the Cheyenne. Ah. Uh, has Franklin ever been on this? Uh... Yeah. Podcast, yes. Does mm-hmm. he talk? Yeah, he's... he's <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, a total of 85 sentences over the two podcasts he did. He, can, he contributed to the Ubu fight. Ubu fight. Oh, yeah, that's right. He that's did. right. I want to do a spoof of the Ubu fight in the blooper reel. He just, like, falls off, but he's not dead when he goes, Ah! Fuck! Ow! Oh, this is a horrible idea! Why did I do... Do y'all have any animators that are helping y'all out currently? Or, like, not yet. We're not at that I stage. I mean, other than Sean here. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, we're we're not at that stage. But I should just stop by like colleges that like have animation departments mm-hmm. or whatever. And just see if people are like Batman quote. would be interested just off the bat. Because mm-hmm. I mean given <laughs> given what we have to work with, I mean we've already got the artistic style defined for us. Yeah, you know, we've got yeah. Yeah, we know what Gotham looks like. We know what all of these characters mm-hmm. look like, which is a big part of which is a big part of it out of the way, character design. If you've already got that done, that's that's a decent bit of the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just a matter of people who want to get involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's 
So it's it's finding people who are willing to donate time to doing this, yeah. same as we have. Kind of like a volunteer, but like an investment kind of thing, right? Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. and at the end of this, I mean, I'm th- by the end of this year, I want to have a workable screenplay. Yeah, it, even like the final draft of the screenplay, if possible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think I think with what with the framework we have now, I think if we work if we work together on this, then we can get it hammered out by the end of the year. I agree. And how many episodes yeah. do you have currently? Uh, this is episode thirty-one, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Now, the current thing, the current animatic that's based off episode one, right? Uh, that's based off of uh, several. Uh, uh, several. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Should we should we show him just so he's like up to speed on that, and we can continue talking about that on the podcast? Show, show him what the the Joker animatic. Oh, okay. Have you not seen it? I thought you Wait, I, I've seen the one that where you went on, you, you took uh, clips and you messed Yeah, that, that one. Okay, yeah, I saw that. Okay, you it. saw that one. Yeah. So it kinda, it's kind of like a summary of the whole, um, like the whole range of episodes? Or... Uh, well, no, that's uh, that's just uh, a, a story for, for one scene. Mm-hmm. That, that, believe me, that's, that's not the entire scope of what we've got in over 30 episodes. Over 30 episodes, what we have is we have that done, we have a trailer written and mostly storyboarded. Uh, Sean's been working on that, but work's been hitting him like a fucking truck, so... That's the layout of the entire script. Yeah, that's... That's a lot. Yeah, that's that's all of the major scenes in the movie. Yeah, Yeah. each line's a scene. Oh, okay. Um, It's organized, though. That's good. So we've, we've got... We've oh, got yeah, that done, so we've got we've got the flow of the story. We know where it starts. We know where it ends. We know how we get mm-hmm. from point A to point B. Um, so we've got we've got that. We've got um, just there's been a lot of ideas thrown out. Mm-hmm. Uh, just some of them may get incorporated later because we don't. We have the flow written, but a lot of the scenes we don't have written themselves. Like a lot, of, like there's a scene that we had an idea for, but the scene itself isn't written yet. Where, uh, matter of fact, I think that's where this is heading is where Batman is watching the news to try and figure out what's going on because the previous day or a couple of days earlier, a city got attacked. It was France, and just everyone was killed, and nobody knows what happened. Mm. All they know is that there was just this big gas attack and all of a sudden millions of people dead. Well, later on he's watching the news. He's watching nine different news broadcasts at once, uh, just all over the world, seeing you know what information he can gather from that. And then an attack happens, like right there, and a couple of the cities that he's currently watching are sitting there being attacked live while he watches them. Mm-hmm. And the, the movie... The movie is supposed to it's it's sort of a mix of an action movie as well as a uh now when you say movie uh y- y'all are gonna make, y'all making like a full uh, like Yeah, it's a, it's going to okay, be a feature I know episodes or, or Yeah, no, it's it's going to be a feature length film. We don't know exactly how long it is. It's going to be we think it's going to finish out somewhere between an hour and ten minutes and an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is, but again, when we get the screenplay written, we'll have mm-hmm. a really decent idea of exactly how long the movie is going to take. And do you have any like time constraints on when you when you think you might start production of actual like you know? Um, we're thinking, at least the my train of thought was that uh, animation would start as soon as the storyboards and the voice acting are complete. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the voice uh, acting is definitely important to animate. Yeah. So we're thinking cuz we're going to we're going to guess that the uh, the first year is just going to be all the writing. Mm-hmm. All the writing is going to go through the first year. The next year we're going to split it off into uh, I'm going to do the uh, directing of the voice actors, mm-hmm. uh, corralling all them, trying to with the finished screenplay get it with the finished screenplay get an actual audio play of the film so you can sit there and just listen to the movie happen uh perhaps even with the music finished at that time Mm -hmm. uh and we we want the i'm of the opinion that uh a lot of the 
action scenes should be animated to the music. It's the same way they've, they've done it throughout most of the Star Wars films, is uh, the action scenes, George Lucas always had John Williams write the music first, and then choreograph it based on that. Because mm-hmm. it's it, it usually ends up being a lot better to have a fight scene choreographed to music mm-hmm. than to try and write music around a previously choreographed scene. Mm-hmm. Now, now, sometimes your hand is forced. I've seen a couple of fan films where the music was actually written for the fight scene uh, after it was filmed, and it ended up pretty good, but that's... You don't, instant, like, you don't get that emphasis sometimes. Right, you know, there's... Uh, and with with animation, I think it'll be a lot easier, just as a as an additional reference for the animators. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're thinking the storyboarding. Uh, see, the storyboarding is going to be done a little differently after we get the trailer done because the trailer everything's very detailed, all the nice shading. I mean, they're nice looking pictures. Mm-hmm. When we get to the actual like storyboarding, the film step, they're going to be storyboards, you know. Rough sketches, yeah, you know, stick and, figures. yeah, you know, do do the stick figures and whatnot, and then with you know, occasionally we'll have a storyboard that's actually like drawn out, and it's like a you know, usually when there's like a set design or something like that, or a scene that's that really needs emphasis, but like there's no reason to go through and shade all the dialogue sequences or whatnot. I mean, yeah, we know what those are going to look like. We know what people talking look like. But we're thinking, we're thinking at the end of. I'm not exactly sure how long it'll take, but I'm looking for some time. The voice acting, at least, I think that's only going to take a couple of months. Mm-hmm. Uh, once we actually get everyone the scripts, uh, the storyboarding might take a little longer. But fortunately, right now the only person we have that has any real drawing skill is Sean. But when it comes to the storyboarding, I can draw fucking stick figures. So yeah. I mean, we'll be we'll all be able to throw in on the storyboards. Uh, so we'll have three people working on it instead of one, mm-hmm. and that'll really hammer it out. So we're thinking that if and of course I've got a lot of other friends that are interested in helping out on the project. Mm-hmm. So we're thinking you know maybe one day a week here and there we'll actually have just five or six people come to my house and we'll all just start getting to, getting to work on the stick figures. We could probably blow that out in a couple of months. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking that animation could conceivably start as early as June of next year. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah if, enough, if you get enough people interested, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Animation takes a really time to process. Yeah, I, I, but it's, it's really and, and the way we're thinking is because we have talked to a lot of people about this and mm-hmm. a lot of people, especially... Uh, I've got another friend named Bobby who goes to the governor's school. Mm-hmm. He's talked to his classmates about it, and he he's, he knows like six or seven people who would love to be in on this. And I haven't personally talked to any of them, and of course, you know, there's always going to be scheduling and shit, but we're figuring, you know, if we can get six people out of a class of 30 that would like to help, then I don't think it's going to be too difficult, especially when we start going on the internet, like Reddit and stuff like that, trying to, and, you know, we're going to, you know, we understand that we're going to have to come up with funds for a lot of this because a lot of people do uh, do this for money. Yeah. One thing, one thought is, um, have you ever thought about possibly pro- pro- like I, I know like the, I'm working for a studio out in Richmond right now mm-hmm. that um, they have a film that they've been trying to complete for a while now. It's been on the back burner. So yeah. what they ended up deciding to do was um, they ended up going to my college that I went to VCU and they talked to one of the professors about proposing it as a class to get it you know so basically you're getting all that work all that all them students to work on a film to get it to you know basically you know for learning experience but also for you know producing all the visual effects and getting it you know to a point where you like it but it is kind of free work but at the same time they're getting something out of it you know that's actually a fantastic yeah idea. that really is <laughs> Shit, at least, you know, even if it's not the whole class, if some students want to work on that and use mm-hmm. that as their project. The the catch, though, for most professors, that would probably be the whole Batman thing. You know, just... Yeah, because it would be... Uh, it's, like, oh, it's not that serious, but in, in, in theory, like, there are a lot of people that are interested in that kind of, like, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. genre and that kind of, like, you know, animated style and all that. 
But, you know. Because the animated series has, it's often hailed as the pinnacle of animation just for the decade it was mm-hmm. in. Um, like, I've, I've heard of it coming up on classes before. I don't know if it was ever mentioned in any of the classes you did for animation. What? But, uh, the, the Batman animated series took place in the 90s, uh, 1992 mm-hmm. to 1995 it ran. Um, I really talked about it, but I definitely am aware of it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's something that uh, people are aware of. Who the fuck is it that I know? Uh... <sighs> Shit, what the hell is his name? Somebody I went to, uh, somebody I went to high school with ended up. Uh, he's out at what the hell's that name of that art school in California? Um, CalArts. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, he, he. I think he's said something about. Uh, they've mentioned it there. I would, I would, I would be surprised. I mean, Cal Arts is like the place to go for hand drawn animation. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know somebody that, well, they're not actually going to this school, but I was taught by teachers that went there. And they, yeah, they definitely, you know, most people that go there end up working in the industry in some way or another with, um, you know, animation in general, whether it's hand drawn or, you know, 3D. Right. And then there's, uh, and, what we're what we're gonna do is that this is mostly going to be animated and oh shit, kill the monitor. <laughs> yeah, there's a short in my monitor somewhere. I need a new one. <laughs> That's me timing something. <laughs> but hit your key. It's a bomb. <laughs> but it's gonna be uh, animated primarily. We're thinking in Adobe Flash. Yeah, um, I, I would, well, when it comes to technical like production wise, definitely you know ask me whenever if you ever need anything. But I mean, mm-hmm. I would definitely love to work in this project if I'm not currently doing anything. Like mm-hmm. right now, I have jobs lined up for the next three months, which is gonna supply me with enough money to. At least you know get do some work on the side, but have months you know to do to myself. Right. So, I mean, if you ever had any technical problems or whatever, you know, tell Sean and stuff. Hit me up. Right. I don't really come down here that much, in mm-hmm. Waynesboro, but because I'm always in Richmond, I live in Richmond. So um, yeah, go through Sean, and, or even call me or whatever, Facebook, whatever. But yeah, but, I mean, technical problems. If you ever want to know how to produce something and what program. Mm-hmm. Or, like, even combining programs together, because, you know, 3D yeah. with 2D is always best. I mean, always good, because you can get some nice, you know, stylistic effects. Mm-hmm. Or even save on Yeah, animation. and I've noticed they do that a lot, especially with, uh, what was it, Sub-Zero? Yeah, yeah, a lot of, you know, a lot of times when they have something that's a really regular shape. Like a, like a geometric shape that would be really hard to mimic, like, the 3D rotation of it. Mm-hmm. Or it would be even strenuous to do it by hand when you could have the ease of doing it with a computer. And just right, and do it. Do it and... Now, what I don't know is if it would be possible to do that but keep a similar shading so it doesn't stand out quite as much as, as oh, yeah. being yeah. different. You could, um, filters. I mean, you could even, um, what you can do. Is, is that, that how you... they did the Iron Giant? The Iron Giant? No, that was actually all done by um, hand, I believe. I thought it had some 3D. It might. It probably. It could have. I. I. It probably. Okay, did. I, I, I pretty yeah. Sure it did. I think it did. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. But they they ended up coloring it. I, 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 I think. <laughs> I, I think what they did was they. Uh, it, my guess is that they took and the the geometry they did that on the computer, but they did it just line and then they shaded it by hand. Yeah. What you can do if you ever see um like um if you ever watched. Uh, Blackwater Gospel. Um, you should definitely check it out. Uh, what they did was they made simple geometric shapes in 3D programs, such as like Maya 3D or whatever, right? And what they did was they had um, like you know artists of some sort to go into Photoshop, do the, the illustrations to the style, and then wrap that image around the geometry. And you can do that with like like Sub Zero's like I don't know like uh, like say you need that shading for like his dome piece. I don't know if they did it for that because that. Right? Harley have seen all the Batmans, mm-hmm. but um, like you could even like take that geometry, apply that illustration to it, and you know rotate or whatever, and those images you know will stay you know true to the style. And it could look a little jarring, you know, with three D with the two on top of two D, but mm-hmm. there's things you could do like you could you know take out every other frame of that three D rotation, but. I'm not too sure on how that would look. You know, just to kind of match the frame rate of the two D drawn hand drawn. Right. I think it'd be difficult to do that without ending up with artifacts. With what? Uh, to start pulling frames out of it, or whatever, um, trying to match it up. The only thing that you'd get was um, would be like frame skips a little bit, or maybe even like not that smooth of a rotation. Um, mm-hmm. um, art, artifacts. Um, I don't think you get artifacts. I mean, because like in three D, you render out sequ- sequential images, right? So you have all them frames, kind of like a hand drawn animation, and you put them into a video editing suite. 
and then you play it. You could uh, probably fuck with your interpolation. Hmm. Oh, um, you mean like of like the animation curves and all that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's yeah tons of things. I mean, you probably should... you'd probably get away with. Uh, my guess is, don't they allow you to set frame rate in those yeah, yeah, uh, then, 3D then programs? Yeah, you can match it like right off the bat. Oh, there you go. I mean, yeah, it's kind of a work around, but yeah, that you can definitely do that. Just like go into the project settings, set the frame rate, and then just you know render it out. Well, that's then, that's uh, what we do. Most of what we've been doing in terms of just the other stuff, so like mm -hmm. twenty nine nine seven. Yeah, another thing you could do is you could render out. Say you have a geometry that you want to be in the se sequence, right? I've seen this with like many cartoons mm -hmm. or animated series. You could render out some kind of object in three D, right? Bring the flash and then trace over it. That way, you have the structure there. You're just tracing and then like tune shading it in or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd, um, that'd do it, especially for a lot of the Gotham architecture. I think that'd be yeah. done pretty well. It's like yeah. like the uh, the opening credit sequence of Mask of the Phantasm that was mm -hmm. done in 3D, but yeah. that looked that, but that looked like Gotham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you ever like. Because I, I noticed in Batman they have a lot of like city scenes, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. A lot of parallax with city scenes. Like you'd have images moving behind images, and I, I'm not too sure if they have a lot of rotation of buildings, like a camera rotating around buildings. Um, it it depends entirely on the scene. Because yeah. I know a lot of times it's like matte paintings that are kind of moving like parallax, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have, I mean, have like if you have like rotations around buildings, that would be a good time to like do a simple 3D, you know, model of that building. And then, you know, like like I said before, like, draw on top of that. That way, you know, you do every frame by frame, and you know you're not second-guessing your architectural skills, you know? Right. Um, and, and you can, you know, get it there nearly perfect, but, you know. And, so, and something I'm sure they'll do a lot is they'll take, like, you know, the design, like, five or six buildings, and then, like, sort of warp them and stretch them and whatnot and repeat them, mm -hmm. you know, do little additions on one and another. Yeah, and, Just and to, tons like like Cinema 4D, for instance, like they have like you know tune shaders. You can you know have line art shaders. Uh, you can even build your own shaders, like make your own like uh, I don't know pencil line marks, shade it in yourself, scan that in, um, and then you know like overlay overlay that as a shader on that building or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So you can have like stylistic glass that looks like it's been drawn, and like a building that looks like it's been painted in 3D, like a cell shader. Um, and just, you know, have that and just composite it in the background on top of, like, 2D Flash or whatever. Mm -hmm. But even in, like, Flash, Adobe Flash, you can do so much with, like, saving time and animating with, um, you know, transforming your objects. Have you messed with it before? Uh, I haven't messed with it, but I know a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I haven't personally fucked with it, but, like, I know that... I've, I've seen it done where a lot of pe times people will take and build a figure in Photoshop mm -hmm. and then animate it just transforming the different stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's what uh, the How It Should How It Should Have Ended. Uh, no, not... Yeah, the, that Flash series. Uh, basically, they're just like hilarious alternate endings to movies. They do all that in Flash. Mm -hmm. And they build, they build all of their characters in Photoshop and they do the different segments, their arms and stuff, as different layers. Then they uh, pull it over into Flash, and they like puppet tool it there. Or something, or yeah. Like, yeah, puppet tooling it can be difficult sometimes when you're because you, sometimes it kind of looks like it's you know been made that way. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's really hard. To, I mean, it, it can work very well sometimes for um, certain angles. Like if you have a character that's staying at a certain angle, but if you have like a three D turn, that's going to be good to mix maybe that with some hand drawn but primarily you probably would want to stick to hand drawn and transforming like you could have an arm that animates for like four frames like a punch right mm -hmm. and um you know say it, it, it goes out right well you can use like the puppet tool to kind of push that arm out without having to draw all, all those frames right so you kind of have that stretch but also that move but if you have like a rotation of a fist you're going to want to draw that in there you know mm -hmm. um As you can tell, after the script's done, you won't hear much of me on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's... But as I was saying before, I think that's a good rough time frame is that I think, you know, 
Again, we always know how well our set dates go. <laughs> how long was it that I that I said, okay, cool, I've got the animatic done, we can release it tomorrow, and then it was fucking, like, what was it, three or four days later? Yeah, but I don't think that was as much... Oh, you're talking about the Joker one. Yeah, yeah. but, it, you know, we've got... You know, we're... we're because of work, we're hard-pressed for due dates, but that being said, I think that once we get the writing done, we can... Uh, possibly go as early as june starting to look on animation and fuck you reliable fuckers quit giving us shit the longer it takes for this project to be completed the longer you have a show to listen to assholes (laughs) (laughs) pieces of shit (laughs) yeah yeah, i think that's i think that's how it looks So how's Batman get in the mountain? Oh, yeah, that's right. (laughs) So what I was thinking was that we discussed that he's not going to show up there as Batman. He's going to show up there as Bruce Wayne. Uh, What I think is that he goes in the front door. Basically, basically, uh, he goes in and he gets stopped by this surly-looking military guy. And it's just like, this is a private place. How do you even know about this? Uh... Yeah, it's just like I'm. I'm here to listen in on what's going on because I'm part of the relief effort for the victims. And he's just like, I don't believe you. Get out of here. And Superman comes to the door. It's just like it's okay. He's with me. And that's and that's how uh, they're they're walking in there. And then uh, Superman's just like, what do you what do you think you're doing or whatever? They have they have a little. They have a little conversation there, and that's when Bruce tells him, you know, you might want to stay out of this. This is a little, this is this is a little dangerous for you guys. And he's like, what, and it's not for you? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they just have their friendly argument like they always do. And I'd like to have um, a little display of, like, the rest of the world arguing or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Like, uh, nobody being at peace because nobody knows what's going on. Oh yeah, and, there's going to be a lot of accusing and shit. And maybe Superman has to like interject and be like, "Hey, we don't know anything." Like, and then they're like, "How can we trust you? You're in cahoots with crazy billionaires." <laughs> and then Bruce just slowly walks backwards out, out of there. <laughs> but he'll, he'll be there trying to look for any sort of suspicious activity and he'll find that he's not able to find anything. Yeah. But he'll notice... But before this, he'll have noticed that the, uh, the attacks weren't all going for military targets. So he'll already go in noticing that it might not be a, an attack made by some, you know, military or whatever. It might not be anything political. That, yeah, that's a good idea. Bruce should bring to light a logic-based point that nobody else has been able to step back enough to bring up. Like like the fact that there haven't been military, or that there have been targets that weren't military, or um, that didn't have certain uh, political agendas or something. Just something that let them know that like nobody knows who it is or what's going on. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool if Bruce was able to like I don't know offer something to that conversation that's already happening, mm-hmm. or at least like whisper it to Superman or something like that. Cause, yeah, because I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, because Bruce, granted, like, people... Bruce doesn't care about their conversation, and Superman does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's like and see. Granted, we are talking about the same people who don't recognize uh, Clark Kent as Superman when he takes off his glasses or whatever. So that, that that is who we're dealing with here. But if they notice that Batman isn't with the Justice League, but Bruce Wayne is, yeah, I wonder. I wonder how well that would uh, how well that would work. Well, I don't think they. It has to be explicitly like he's with me with the Justice League. He's just like, hey, this guy's cool. Mm-hmm. He can be in here. I know him. We're buddies. Met him at a dinner. <laughs> Went on a boat with the entire cast of the Broadway thing for the Dark Knight. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me a bunch of Russian strippers. 
Yeah. I broke two or three of them, but after I learned to be gentle. <laughs> he always has that problem. Yeah. Faster than a speeding bullet. Poor guy. <laughs> hey, he may not be good, but at least he's fast. Can you guys imagine how much it costs for the ten seconds it showed Bruce on the yacht with all those Russians to have a plane fly in for him to leave? Like that scene didn't even need to be in there, but they just had the money for it. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. So Batman leaves the mountain place. And he's like, he's on his way to Paris, but we want him to stop and get his uniform mm-hmm. and the Batwing. And we said, Alfred's like, take the Batwing; it's cheaper on gas. <laughs> Um, also, I think we should have something where, like, uh, cause we, we seriously did discuss that, like, uh, he, he calls Alfred when he leaves the mountain meeting and then, uh, they establish that he's going to get the Batwing before going to Paris. Um, I think when, when, um, fucking, no, wait, that won't work. Never mind. I was going to say when... Alfred's like preparing breakfast or whatever and like mm. walking through the house or something. There could be just like a Batman like suit just on the wall, just like for display or something. Um, and then like when they're on the phone, it can be like down and Bruce can, or Alfred can like say that like he he found a spare that he can use or something like that. But then I realized that like Bruce wouldn't keep Batman stuff up in the house, it's all in the Bat Cave. Right. But could we just <laughs> could we and yeah or uh, uh, I mean cause what I'm guessing for this is that uh, at least in this in this continuity they make all their stuff in house or at least a decent at least a decent bit of it they could just say that they forgot that there's spares on the batwing and that's why he has to come back and get the batwing maybe is that just <laughs> is that just horribly convenient? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, Alfred could make him one or something. Okay. Because I mean, the uh, uh, Batman himself's not going to have much of a role in the production of the new bat suit. He's going to be off doing shit while that happens. Right. Well, that's that was going to be. That's why I don't see why Alfred will be making an old suit because. As Bruce leaves for the mountain, he orders Alfred to work on the new suit. Yeah, yeah, okay, so, um, maybe he was wrong and there is a spare, um, or something. Hold on. Why is he Batman in Paris? Because there, there, there he'll need, he'll need it because, uh, because he's, he's going to be doing a lot of stealth stuff. It's going to be a lot more difficult to sneak around in a in a fucking three piece suit than it is right. to be in the in the bat suit. And I guess it'd be very suspicious if billionaire Bruce Wayne was just like chilling in Paris, like right after this happened. Yeah, yeah. Especially, I mean, that would that would actually probably put him pretty high on a suspect list of the people that fucking did it. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, my guess how we could write it is that. The suit that got shot was his last spare. Um, but then maybe the next day Alfred says, you know, he mended it or something like that. He got the blood out of it. Yeah, or yeah. or maybe because the reason he well, said it's been it, a week. It's been a week since he got shot. He could have washed yeah. it and sewed it together by the time. Yeah, that's shot. right. Cause, okay. Or we could just drop the line. We could just find a different way. To uh, make Bruce realize he needs to create a new bat suit, so that's not the last one. Yeah, we could say that it's just like we'll need to get we'll need to get one of your new suits. Though this one is pretty much ruined. Mm-hmm. Something like that. It was, doesn't have to be his last spare, but he has as long as as long as Alfred drops the phrase "new suit" mm-hmm. for for uh, for I guess. That's not really the button, but... 
but yeah. it, but as as a segue into the next line, right? But he but he drops he drops some line about you're going to need to grab a, one of your new suits. Yeah. Okay. So I'll just go back and edit that so it's not uh, that specific. Um. Okay. So he gets to Paris, and then I imagine just like as soon as we get there, the first thing we see is just uh, you know, the destroyed park, and that's where he walks up to. Mm-hmm. And. Whatever. Um, and then he's like looking at that destruction, and Talia's like, he hears a noise, and like, oh, we said something like he picks up a video camera, and he's like watching it happen on a replay of a video camera, and then he hears a noise, and he lowers the video camera, and Talia's looking at him. Mm hmm. Do we still like that? I yeah, thought that, I, still I, like I thought that. that's a pretty cool reveal. Okay. Um, now, and we had had the debate as to whether they like fight because they're like they don't know or Batman doesn't know like where she's at or who her loyalty's with or like uh, they've had a pretty shitty relationship and uh, do they just talk or do they scuffle or what? My thought was that you know when he sees her she's like masked or something so she you know she's got on like her ski mask or whatever one of those sort of things that that she would wear and she runs and she, she chases was. her mm-hmm. and then finally he corners her and she tries to fight him off and gets in a few good punches uh and then batman finally uh it gets uh gets the upper hand and manages to get her mask off yeah i like that a lot and then he's just like fuck and he fucking punches her again. He's like, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll accept that last part. Right. right, right, right. Or, no, especially that. every Nothing except that last part. Uh, right. But I really like that. Um, the bitch line. <laughs> no. Um, okay, so then he realizes it's her, and then they have, like, a just yeah. exchange. Yeah. And, be- and it's not too long before they see the dog and run after that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, when they leave the family's house, Talia convinces him to go check Lazarus Pits. And, yeah. I mean, that's like fucking four scenes with info for me to work on by mm-hmm. next time. I don't know what else to say. This can be a short episode if you guys. Are <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. My my brain's kind of shot at the moment. Yeah, it's okay. I mean, I mean. What are we sitting at now, anyway? Uh, an hour. Oh, okay. So, what exactly did y'all just discuss? <laughs> like, what part? Like, what, what part of the production was that? We just discussed uh, a few minor details on scenes that like we we knew the beats of the scenes but just like not the few details of like how to get from this beat to this beat or like um just very specific moments and like deciding like stuff that will amount to you know the overall arcing story and like how i write those scenes when i have some free time this week before we get together next time because we have we have 15 pages of the script written already mm-hmm. and that's the first um uh eleven or twelve scenes. Mm-hmm. So uh hopefully by next time now that we've discussed that and I'll be leaving one of my jobs by then I can have three or four of those scenes few scenes written now that we have mm-hmm. some of those details. Where do you currently work at? Jimmy John's and Stanton mm-hmm. and I deliver newspapers every day for two more weeks. It sucks. Sounds like it. I mean, it sounds like it would, because you know, mm-hmm. I heard those newspaper guys. They kind of do it a lot of a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. It's three sixty-five days a year. Well, I'm stoked to be out of it. They pay good. Yeah, depending on what route you have, it's it's like a commission thing, like how many papers you deliver. Hmm. Man, I would do the I would do the one where it's just like. You know, 100,000 newspapers all to one building. <laughs> I've been pushing for that route, but the guy who has it will not give it up for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, get that get that fucking newspaper cannons that'll fire a newspaper through a brick wall. There you go. Deliver it that way. Hell, you you could even do it like two blocks that way. You just fire it through one house into the into a house that's <laughs> over there, and then hit that house. And you just fire it into their lawn. I yeah, thought I thinking. thought about how easy it would be if I just had a helicopter instead of a car. I could just fly over the city and just drop them. So like little parachutes. Yeah. <laughs> or just, or just. <laughs> everyone's just calling, bitching about how their par- or how their uh, newspapers stuck in a tree. Or... <laughs> On the roof. Yeah. Um, since I uh, went through that whole spiel about comedy earlier, and I just did uh, uh, a great episode of my other podcast, I think I'm going to do some cross promotion and say anybody that doesn't know I have another podcast, it's called So Let's Get to the Point. It's and, it's a good show. And my my latest episode, I uh, interview a comic who's been doing it for a while in Virginia Beach, named CB Wilkins, and. Me and my friend Drew Fridley did an open mic that night, and I posted that set at the end of that show. So, if you want to, if you're inter- interested at all in my form of comedy or what I'm going for, or if that interests you in any way, or there's many other episodes with any many other subjects you could listen to, it's called So Let's Get to the Point. You can find it on iTunes. Follow this show on Twitter at Project underscore Batman. Follow me at the Ken Edwards. The Ken Edwards. Ken with two ends. Um, yeah. And any inquiries, you can throw them uh, to weareprojectbatman, all one word, at gmail.com. But don't type the all one word part. Yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that's not part of it. Oh, and like us on Facebook. Yeah. I keep forgetting about our damn Facebook page. Like, I don't think I've updated it in, like, well over a month and a half. Also, you guys don't share any of the posts. <laughs> you guys need to share the podcast when I post it. Well, I think Sean checks Facebook like twice a year. He does. Yeah, twice <laughs> a year. Or 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 Chris gets on. Well, I just didn't want to. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to single you out. <laughs> so <laughs> you have to, you have to share. We can, we can start graffitiing it on buildings like they did in the wave. The wave, which is this, uh, which is this uh, German film. This. It's really about that. A German, oh, yeah. German film about a Batman podcast? No, 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 no. It's, it's actually a really good movie. <laughs> what a movie. coincidence. It's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's on Netflix. It's a, it's a film based on a true story. That um, The true story is basically that um, in the 60s, they tried doing this experiment uh, about, uh, like, uh, autocracy, like... Uh, like uh, dictatorships and whatnot, uh, because a lot of people thought, it, you know, to see could that ever happen in America. So they did a small experiment with like thirty different people, and I think it was like, and uh, they had to stop it after a week because they started getting like violently proud of this little group that they were in. Hmm. And what this basically is is it puts it in a, the setting of a German high school. Uh, this guy is a teacher on an autocracy class. He didn't want to do that class. He wanted to teach the anarchy class. But uh, but no, he's just like he's just like okay. So you guys really don't think that the Third Reich could ever happen here in Germany again? Because that's something they do in German schools. So they pound how bad that was and all the kids, mm. and so they're just sort of annoyed about it. He's just like okay, here's what we're gonna do. Uh, because apparently in German high schools, they all talk to the teachers on a first-name basis, which I think is kind of neat. Yeah. Which is like, okay, no. Now I'm Mr. Teacher. I don't remember what his name was. And uh, I'm hoping it was Teacher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no. And we're going to wear uniforms for this class. And, and all this stuff. And he starts running the class as if it were a dictatorship as part of the class. And it sort of becomes this big social group that everyone wants to be part of. They start recruiting kids from other classes, uh, to such to a point where about half the high school is doing this. And then they start, like, and then, like, a decent bunch of them would go out and start fucking breaking the law, spray painting their symbol. They, they call themselves the Wave. Um... And, you know, they're spray painting their symbol on the sides of, like, fucking corporate buildings and shit. And it starts becoming incredibly problematic. <laughs> uh, and so it's, it's a really good movie and a really good uh, 
insight into human nature. Dude, that sounds super interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's on Netflix. It's it's uh, German with English subs. So, it's good. But, it's really good. Well, then, too bad. I guess I'll never see it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's uh, when whenever people say no, the United States could never become a dictatorship. I point them to that. I'm not saying it will happen or is likely, but yeah. I'm, it definitely could with with uh, with the right with the right force behind it. It totally could. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. You get the wrong person in power, mm. anything could happen. Um, and just because I did it right before we came over, and Sean, you didn't ask, even though you always ask. I saw Captain Phillips. I was gonna ask. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I heard it was amazing. Um, look, I went into it wanting to see it and like hearing it was great and wanting it to be great. I just hate Paul Greengrass, the director. Yeah. I hate his style. I think he's good at story and like act, uh, directing actors and everything. But he does. His, I mean, I lo- and I like the second two Born movies because yeah. they're Born movies. But, like, he does this shaky cam thing that's just, like, constant. And, like, it's fine with shots from, like, far away. But, like, any shot oh, you of, mean, like... Oh, you mean, like, J.J. Abrams. J.J. doesn't do that. <laughs> you are, I, you've said this so many times. And I, I am a J.J., like, super fan. I'm, I'm doing it. it to piss you off. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Fine. But, no, it's, like, shakier than any found footage movie. Like... I don't understand why that's supposed to, like, make me... Uh, it just gives me seasickness. Especially oh, when yeah. we're in a movie out in a boat. But, um... Anyway, that happens in the movie, and that's really bothersome. But other than that, it's really, really something. They did and, that in a scene in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, and it fucking stood out, so it was jarring. Yeah. And I was like, oh, God, this hurts to watch. And then they never did it again, because they realized it was stupid. Why did we do that? Um, <laughs> but there are some movies where, like, that's not true. The bathroom scene in The Half Blood Prince, uh, it wasn't quite so bad. You know, I only, you know, I don't think I only, I think I only saw The Half Blood Prince one time. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> you get the gist of it. <laughs> or no, no, I saw it twice. Oh. I saw it twice. But okay, you know how there are some movies where you can like. They're, like, good. You can enjoy them without being really emotionally involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's how I felt for, and for the entire movie, but... And I would say spoiler alert, but this is a real thing that happened, and you can't spoil this movie. Yeah. Like, you know, he gets out of the shit. You're right. Um, but I, it, it was one of those movies for me where, like, I was following it, and it was exciting, and it's pretty long, but it was pretty exciting. But, like, I didn't really care emotionally... And, like, there had been buzz about Tom Hanks. This should be an Oscar-winning role. And, like, I was... The whole time I was like, he's good, but he's not Oscar good. The last five minutes, I had not felt connected to this movie at all. But the last five minutes of the movie, I, like, out of nowhere, totally unexpected, bawled so hard. Chris cried. And Hollinsworth. I cried so... Hollinsworth cried? Chris and Hollinsworth and um, Ashley cried. Dude, I mean, oh my god, I, I'm not that's gonna, nuts. That I'm, is nuts. I'm not gonna say like what's going on. It's a very simple thing that's happening. Like it's not a big defining character scene, but it's like he gets penis cancer. No, just watching. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I would cry if I found out I had penis cancer. You're not using it. <laughs> you just lost ten of your fans. <laughs> speaking, speaking, you know, coming from. Coming from two guys that are, you know, both only slightly older than... Actually, I think... Well, you're, you're older than Sean? I am older than By Sean. a okay. year and a... By... Not even a full year. By <laughs> 300 and... But, okay. Talking to two guys my age who both have kids. Yeah. Don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> We're the same age for a day, Okay. <laughs> for a full day, you just you sour about it. I mean, I'm not sour about for it. For one day, he can. I say just I don't have the upper hand over authority. I mean, <laughs> elders. You have to respect him. <laughs> all, all but one day a year. <laughs> My birthday, sadly. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a good birthday present. I know. <laughs> she exactly goes, why I'm fuck you, like, Bobby. I hope you die. He, and he's obligated to like spend time with you because you're friends like every birthday. So you just smack him every birthday you see. <laughs> well, see, that's why he didn't come to this birthday. Is that what it was? Yeah. All right, Sean, pull out, pull out your phone so I can see that again. <laughs> I almost watched a movie. Which one? Uh, much Ado About Nothing. Oh, yeah, Almost Much Ado About Nothing. <laughs> almost Much Ado About Nothing. Um, and I started to watch a little bit of Pacific Rim. I don't care for it. Interesting. I saw about half of it. I don't care for I it. I heard a lot of people liked it. I don't yeah. care for it. I'm very it's, bored. It's really not bad, but I, I'm just not into it. I don't connect to it. Even Hollingsworth couldn't get into it. Did people just Is that get... saying something? <laughs> like a scale of well, Hollingsworth got into fucking Safe House. That's bad. Hollingsworth, like, Did you see Safe place? House? Hollingsworth? Yeah, it takes place. No. Oh, no, he's in the... Who the hell was in that? Denzel Washington and... Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, Ryan Reynolds and Denzel Washington. A movie called Safe House. Uh, shit, th- seriously, oh, the I Safe House... Huh? Or I saw the trailer. Seriously, the safe house is in the first five minutes of the fucking movie and is never seen or heard from again. I, it's like from safe houses. Well, wasn't the idea for them to go to another safe house? I don't. Fuck, they, I they never do it. I couldn't I tell. I couldn't tell. I don't know what the idea was. <laughs> I don't mind. I, but they had no plot. But, but, but then, but yeah, it's it. It's sort of like if I wanted to. Uh, Say I wanted to make a uh, a Star Trek movie, and the movie is called like Ensign Lynch. You're onto something though. It was <laughs> it was trying to be a serious Die Hard three, and it was <laughs> it was or it's just like it's like RoboCop if if the whole movie was actually named after like the bad guy's character. <laughs> Which, who I don't even remember. Or like Jurassic Park, that were named after that lawyer Gennaro. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what Safe House is. Yeah, Gennaro's Park. Park. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going to say. Gennaro's Park. <laughs> alright, alright. Is, is that our episode title, Gennaro's Park? <laughs> yeah, yes it is. It, it sure is. Alright, Sean, read this quote with me. You found it. You read the first line, and I'll do the second. How will it hold up against dogs? We talking Rottweilers or Chihuahuas? Should do fine against cats. <laughs> that was actually a passable Morgan Freeman approach.